<laughs> well, this welcome to the Austin Spring Home Show exhibitor webinar. Thanks for attending. Thanks for for listening. This webinar is is put into place with the intention to help the exhibitors understand how best they can uh, participate in the show and have the very best uh, exhibiting experience that they can while in the show. The show runs March 24th through the 26th, 2023 at the Palmer Events Center. And to begin, we'd like to thank our sponsors and partners in the show. Those sponsors and partners include Stones and Scapes, Freedom Yurt Cabins, God's Dogs Rescue, American Horticulture Society, Architectura, Texas Bamboo Society, Albert Gonzalez Art, and Moon Valley Nurseries. If you're interested in sponsoring the show, we have several different sponsorship opportunities, including the presenting sponsor of the show, the shuttle sponsor, um, entrance sponsor, although this show we don't have a shuttle sponsor, but typically in future shows you can kind of expect that and think about that. Um, entrance sponsor, bag sponsor, stage sponsor, and aisle sponsors. I am the person talking right now. My name is Dave Mon, and I'm the show manager for this show. And also joining me are uh, Lindsay Reinars, who is the operations coordinator, and Lucy Ferguson, who is the show coordinator. And then Sarah Edwards is the exhibit sales consultant. So we make up your Austin home show team. Today, we're going to talk about tickets, parking, entrances, move in and move out, how we market the show, booth setup and rules, and then some tips and tricks for a successful show. So let's turn the time over to Lindsay. Yes. All right. Well, I'm super excited about our show. Uh, we have some great highlights. Um, We'll have April Wilkes Wilkerson um, join us, and she is a home improvement expert, YouTube sensation, and she will be on the Fresh Idea stage Saturday and Sunday. We are also going to have our adorable puppies again and dogs um, provided by God's uh, Dogs Rescue. They will be um, showcasing their adoptable pets. Um, we'll have presentations done on the stage by our very own exhibitors that are always great uh, to watch them up on stage. Texas Bamboo Society will be back again and they will have um, a garden area where they will be answering questions and selling bamboo. And then our uh, artist, Albert Gonzalez, will be back. Uh, he was in a different show we did and it was fun to see him paint, but he will be doing some painting demonstrations on Friday and Saturday. So it should be a lot of fun with these uh, with this year's highlights. OK, ticket prices. So if you buy your ticket at the box office, it's $10 um, for adults and $8 if you get them online. Seniors are $8, box office older, and as always, children 16 and under are free. And just an update to our show hours, we have tweaked it just a little bit. So Friday, we the show will start at 11 a.m. and go till 7. Saturday, 10 a.m. and end at 7, and Sunday stays the same at 11 a.m. to 6. So just keep in mind that the show hours have changed just slightly from previous shows. Okay, Luke. and exhibitors. Oh, sorry, Dave. Oh, I was just going to say, Lucy, you're up. Oh, I was ready. <laughs> um, exhibitors, you all do get free tickets to send out for the show. The email comes from our ticketing website. Uh, it comes from an email, no, the no reply at mail3.microspec. It'll say my name, but that's the email address that it comes from. I sent them all out uh, last Friday on March 3rd. If you booked your space after that, I send them out every Friday afternoon. So um, if you're watching it today, you'll get them tomorrow on the 10th and so on. These often can get filtered into your spam folder. So if you just search for that email address, it should come up. And uh, that's the email that, that or that's what the email looks like. 
And just to note, these the tickets are not for your team or your employees that are working your booth space. You want to pick up badges. These are just for people you want to visit the show. But once you get to that email, if you just click here, it'll take you to this next page. No, you got it, Dave. Yeah, Sorry. next page. Yeah. Too early? <laughs> okay. No, it was perfect timing initially. And, and then, you know, we, we had a, oh, a little yeah. backtrack. <laughs> but this is your, uh, your ticket portal manager. Uh, you can kind of customize it on the left over there. You can add your company logo. And on the right, you can track your tickets. So everyone gets 20. And so under a lot of there, you see 20. You can track how many you've sent. The fulfilled means whoever you sent them to downloaded the ticket from the website. And then redeemed mean that ticket was scanned at the show. So the person went to the show. So it, it lets you track it right there. Now to send them out, all you need to do is click on invite a contact. And it takes you over to this screen. So you just type in the ticket quantity, type in a name and type in an email. You can add in a note, but there's going to be a preset email um, giving show information. So it's a super easy process. And then you just hit continue and the email sends out. And then in addition to your 20 allotted tickets, we are doing a ticket redemption contest just to uh, get more bodies through the door. Uh, if you just email me, I'll make you a promo code that'll be good for additional free tickets and you can post the promo code. Um, it'll be for your company. So you can post your company's promo code on your social media. You can send that out to people and whoever has the most uh, redeemed uh, tickets with their promo code is going to win a free 10 by 10 booth for our fall show. Pretty awesome. Very awesome. Great idea, Lucy. I thought so as well. <laughs> and then for parking, uh, the Palmer Event Center does have an attached parking garage. Um, it has two entrances, one's on Barton Springs Road across from Terry Black's Barbecue. And then the second's on the Riverside next to the Long Center. It's $10 a day and it has, I want to say, 3,000 spots. So day to day, it does typically fit everybody, but it can fill up. So $10 a day. And Lindsay, I believe this is you. Okay, yes. Um, so let's talk about uh, entrance, exit, and will call. We have one entrance exit for the show in the front. We decided to stop having our exhibitors have to climb out the back window to come in and out. So you can just come in the front now. Um, the entrance is also going to use um, by exhibitors to access the show floor. So you will need to have your exhibitor badge on show days um, so that you are not stopped and asked for a ticket. You can just show your badge to get in since you are working at the show. Um, exhibitor badges can be collected at the show office desk during move-in and throughout the show. We'll have somebody sitting at the desk that can um, hand them out to you. Uh, you can collect the ones you'll need all at once, or you can leave some at will call if that's easier for you if you have other people um, coming that you won't see before the show. All right, so now we see the um, map of the show. Um, you can see at the bottom in red, that's where the show office desk is, where you can collect your exhibitor badges. And then the show entrance uh, right uh, next to it there. Also, um, you can see the loading dock in and out area, just to give you an idea of where you will be driving in um, to move in and, uh, and to move out through the side right over here and kind of a lime green, good choice of color. Thank you. It's it's one of my favorites is lime green. It's not easy being green. OK, let's Thanks, move Kirby. on. <laughs> <laughs> Temporary food licensing and sampling. Uh, one of my favorite subjects to talk about is food. And uh, so if, if you want to sample the show, it must be approved through us and also the venue first. So please let us know if you're planning on sampling or selling food at the show. Uh, once approved, a food and beverage permit must be filled out and there is a $280 fee that is due to the city. Um, the application deadline um, is March 21st and you can find the application on the exhibitor kit on our website um, and the link is, is listed right there for you as well. Sometimes people ask um, this question, and it's, uh, what about bite-sized candies? 
yeah. Yeah, the the answer to that is that you don't need a food and beverage permit for something like that. Like if it's a packaged like little, you know, bite-sized candy, that's okay in a jar or something like that in your booth space. It's anything that you're actually going to sample out to people um typically for, you know, set, you're trying to sell a food item or something like that. Yeah, I think that this is Dave's way of saying bring extra candy so he can snack on it. Am well, I right, Dave? yeah, yeah. <laughs> is there absolutely. anything specific that you're looking for? Um, <laughs> no, I, I I like dark chocolate best. So, um, you know, if anyone has any of that, that'd be great. I wouldn't be upset by some extra Reese's. Oh, I like Reese's too. Peanut butter and chocolate, wonderful. Okay, like well, such... I just did them, Dave. You have to stick to your dark chocolate now. <laughs> All right. How do you think? How do you think this works, Lucy? <laughs> well, we were about to find out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Wait. we are going to move on to moving in information. So we've got our move in map here. Um, so if you notice, we've got different move in days and that is to keep things organized so people aren't driving over each other's booths and bumping into each other and all that. So if we can have the blue booths move in Wednesday, anytime between 8 a.m. and 7 p.m., please move in on your scheduled day. So if your booth is in blue, move in on Wednesday. Thursday um, is the yellowish beige color. And that is from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. But keep in mind that um, well, it says afternoon. Uh, usually it's after 2 p.m. Are we changing that time to noon? Day no, or two, still 2 p.m. 2 p.m. OK, so around 2 p.m. is um, when we the decorator will start laying the carpet so you won't be able to drive to your booth past 2 p.m but you can cart or carry anything if you need to so keep that in mind on thursday and then friday um or, or i'm sorry also thursday that the lifo last in first out area um that is because it's right in front of where you drive in and out and so that'll be those will be the last booths to set up and that'll go um from 12:30 to 2 on on Thursday. So if we can follow the um, the move in days, if you can stick to your scheduled day, that that makes everything run much more smoothly. All right. So for moving out, vehicles will not be able to drive into the building um, prior to 8 p.m. on Sunday, and that is because the carpet is still laid down and the uh, the decorator gems needs time to roll all the carpet. But you can hand cart and carry uh, things out if you would like. Um, exhibitors in that front LIFO area will have the first priority at the loading dock. That way we can make some space for the rest to be able to move out smoothly. All vehicles, uh, or I'm sorry, all other exhibits and vehicles must be 100% removed from the building no later than Monday, March 27th at 12 noon. So please plan on having everything removed by that time. And very important, please do, <clears throat> excuse me, please do not start breaking down your exhibit until the show ends 6 p.m. on Sunday. We still have our attendees in the building and you still can get some sales that last hour so please wait until the show ends to start breaking down yeah that's a that's a really important point we actually had several people in the consumer sur survey and actually in january i was walking behind some someone at about four o'clock on sunday who said um it's a good thing we came now because in an hour from now, all of them, all of the exhibitors would be breaking down their booths and they'd be out of there. So there's there is this this perception in the market in Austin where our exhibitors don't stay till the end. And um, and so people actually stop coming to the show before the sh show ends. So please, please, please do not break down your booth space. Um, I I always tell people go and grab something to eat for dinner from six o'clock to seven o'clock. Come back. It is way easier to get in and out of the building 
Um, oh, you know, a lot has cleared up. The carpet's been rolled out of the way. Things are just much better. So please, if if you could do anything for us, that would be the one of the biggest asks is please do not break down your booth and do not move out until 6 p.m. on Sunday. Now, for how we market the show, um, this is something that we take really seriously and we work really hard to market the show and try to get as much awareness in the market about the show. And we we spend one hundred and forty eight thousand dollars in advertising for this show. Um, that includes TV, billboards, digital. Um, we actually put a fairly big uh, buy with Pandora this time around. Um, and we we spend a lot of money on on digital advertising, YouTube. Um, we're actually doing more YouTube ads this time around also because April's such a big YouTube personality. So we decided to put a little more, more money towards that. We also do mailers um, and billboards. And these are these are a couple examples of the bi billboards and mailers we do with Valpac and with Home and Lifestyle magazine. And then um, you should be seeing bill billboards we we get, have a couple billboards and then we have posters throughout the city and also up in round rock in uh, georgetown and a few other areas outside of austin we try to pull from so um those are also included and then um another thing we do is our virtual showroom and basically um this came into play we always had this but it really came into play in 2020 when you know the world shut down we couldn't run any events we started to look at how we could improve our website for our exhibitors and look for ways to get more people to visit them digitally and so we created an enhanced exhibitor listing and so each exhibitor in the show has an exhibitor listing and every time after the show i get emails from uh, people who attend the show who say you know i talked to this exhibitor but i don't have their contact information i lost it or you know something like that and i need their contact information or i'm i'm looking for this exhibitor they were around this spot in the show but i don't know i don't have any of their information if you do a good job of setting up your virtual showroom, we won't have some of those questions. Instead, they'll be able to find you and go directly to you. So this is the difference between an enhanced listing and a basic listing. A basic listing is those people who basically buy a booth space and never update their, their listing. You should get an automated email after you booked your space to enhance your listing. If you don't have it and you don't see it, please reach out to one of us and we can certainly send it over to you and, and um, help. But this, this option on the left is an enhanced listing. The option on the right is a basic listing. You can see the difference between the two and people are going to view your company so much more positively if you enhance your listings. A couple things I would highly recommend would be to include a show special, um, really highlight what you do and what you do well, and make sure that you can be contacted. You can add your social media handles, um, your logo, all of those kind of things just amplify your listing. And um, Lucy, I think you Yep, I believe this is me. So just some exhibit space dues. Um, you do need a cover, uh, have flooring to cover your entire booth space. Uh, we carpet the aisles, and so we do want you to, to cover the concrete in your space as well. Um, you do need to stay within your contracted space. You can't come out into the aisles and you can't go into any of your neighbor's space. If you have tables, we do need you to skirt them. And the skirting needs to come all the way down to the floor. So you can see in the examples just have it reach the floor. Uh, we need you to use professionally made signage, so nothing handwritten, and then staff your booth. An empty booth means you aren't going to be able to talk to attendees and, and get your money's worth. And then some electrical do's and don'ts. So if you buy electricity, you do have to uh, rent the electricity through the building, but basically don't plug in uh, 
of, you know, outlets on top of outlets. That's called daisy chaining. That's no good. Don't use any homemade power splitters or power cords or anything like that. Just use the your normal surge protectors. And yeah, daisy chaining is probably the, the biggest thing. So once again, no plugging in uh, power cords on top of power cords just to make it longer. That is a fire hazard, unfortunately. And make sure that every one of your uh, extension cords have a ground as well. So um, that is another thing that the fire marshal will come through and check. Yes, the ground The ground is the third plug right. in, the third yeah. prong. Okay, and then if you do need to rent electricity, gas, water, internet uh, from the Palmer, that's how you'll do it. You can go to the exhibitor kit and there's links to do that. There is free Wi-Fi available, but if you need a stronger direct connection, that will be available to rent as well as electricity. And then anything from Gems, our show decorator, if you need tables, chairs, lighting, floor covering, just some uh, extra labor or a forklift, anything like that, um, you'll want to order ahead of time for Gems. They have a huge catalog of things you can order. They'll have some things on site if you haven't, if you didn't rent it ahead of time, but they don't bring their full catalog. They'll just have some extra tables and chairs and, and carpet. Uh, but they have a huge, huge catalog of things you can you can just deck out your booth in. And then some important reminders. So your booth space comes with an eight foot black curtain behind you and three foot high black curtain drapes on your side to separate you from your neighbors. Anything in your space, electric tables, chairs, flooring, et cetera, are not included in your booth space. That's a separate thing. Now, you don't need to, you don't have to rent from gyms. If you have your own tables and chairs to bring in, by all means, bring that in. They're just available if you, if you don't want to do, uh, deal with that hassle. Your booth space cannot exceed eight feet high unless you're in a larger booth, uh, a 20 by 20 booth or larger, or you're on a perimeter wall. Other than that, you need to keep your any of your displays eight feet and lower. Once again, all signs do need to be professionally made, no handwritten. And then if you're going to put up um, like a, a temporary wall, like if you have a, a cabinet display or anything, uh, both sides of the walls do need to be finished or at least covered. You can't have exposed framework or, or wood or anything like that. And then once again, cover your floor. You, you do need flooring in your booth space. Yeah, and I, I would say two of the most important things is like Lucy mentioned, making sure that you have flooring in your booth space. Um, and then also do not exceed the eight foot curtain. If you're anywhere inside this inside the the hall um, that you're not on an exterior wall, or if you're in 400 square, less than 400 square feet. If you're more than 400 square feet, you could go as high as you want. But if you're less than 400 square feet, you have to uh, stick to that eight foot curtain height. Um, last little bit here, um, successful exhibitors. So a few things that we just wanna remind you all, if you've seen this before, you're probably familiar if you've done shows with us, um, booth location matters. Um, picking your booth space certainly matters and um, getting into the show the earlier we sell it on a first come first serve basis. If you renew your booth space on site for the next year's show, you automatically will be able to get your booth or be able to move to a booth that hasn't been booked yet. Um, so we give first rider refusal to the person or the company in that booth space. And then if they don't book by Sunday night, then um, people can swoop in and take their booth space. So um, booking early helps. The next thing, be approachable in your booth space. Um, set up to invite people to your into your booth, not just take up all the space. One thing that kind of drives me crazy is when exhibitors set up and they put so much so much in their booth, people can't come in. It's almost like keep someone comes to your door at, at home and you don't invite them into the house. Instead, you stay out on the at the front door, keep them out on your porch. 
um, inviting people in is a much, a much better experience for them. So invite them into your booth space. Display and focus on what you want to sell. Um, some uh, some exhibitors have a bunch of things that they sell, and that can be overwhelming for the attendee. If you can focus on what you do best and focus on that, and then offer those other things once you get that, um, I've I've found uh, exhibitors to be the most successful doing that. Um, they want a consultant, not a salesperson. So consult the people, understand them, try to understand your potential exhibitors. And that comes from asking good questions and listening to their answers. Make sure you have a goal and measure the success of the show. If you can clearly pinpoint what you got from the show and what your goal was, that's going to help to determine the value that you got from it. And then please make sure to follow up. Um, I always hate it when I hear from people who attend the show and they said, yeah, I came to see this particular exhibitor and then um, I talked to with them and then I never heard from them again. So please make sure that you follow up on the leads that you get. Uh, one thing that comes up all the time and it drives me crazy and and I and I feel so bad for the exhibitors that get taken advantage of on this. You will never see an email from us that says buy a, a customer list from the show. Something where we we collect all the customers information and then sell it to you guys. That will never happen. So if you get an email like that, that is spam. Um, they are scammers and they're trying to take your money. And unfortunately, that's happened more than once to our exhibitors. And so please be aware of that. Please do not give them money. Um, you can let us know when the, when that comes up. I will tell you, you're going to get one because they seem to really focus on our shows, especially right after the show runs. And those scammers will do that. And it's really hard to track them down. So um, please just be aware of that and don't fall victim to it. Um, Next thing here is uh, show office. So just we're, we're going to be there all through the show. We'll be there from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. on Wednesday and Thursday during move in. We'll be there 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. on Friday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. on Saturday and then 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. on Sunday. So if you have any questions, if you need anything, please don't hesitate to come up to the desk in the front um, near the entrance. And that's where our show office will be, and we'll be able to help you from there. And uh, finally, um, Lucy, where did you get this picture? Is this one, <laughs> one of those, like, did, did it come from a, that, I, that game, Awkward Family Photos? That is literally what I searched on Google. I searched Awkward Family Portrait. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you can see, I, you look a little different with blonde hair. Um, <laughs> so that top one is me, Dave Mon. I'm the show manager. And apparently I watched the opening scene of Up Without Crying. And that's actually oh, true. I, I didn't cry. <laughs> I do love the movie, but I didn't cry. And Lucy thinks I'm heartless because of it. I and then <laughs> Lindsay, Lindsay's information is next. Um, she's by far the nicest of, of the three of us. So um, I'm sure most of you will want to reach out to her. She um, she claims to have beaten Usain Bolt in a foot race. And, I did. Um, Not a claim. It happened. I have a hard time believing it because when asked about it, she said that she got a 25 second head start on a 100 meter dash, which if any of you know, um, his world records in the nine second range. So um, there you go. And then L Lucy is that last one and she's still trying to figure out um, how to tie shoes. And um, if you'll notice, she never wears any shoes with laces uh, because of that. So it's, we, no <laughs> it's a hard life. <laughs> we, along with Sarah, are your show team. Um, can't wait to see you all in just a couple weeks. Um, please let us know if there's anything we can do to help you out. And um, 
we recognize that you having a good show is what uh, makes the show good for us as well. So we want to do everything we can to help you have a successful show. And with that, we'll close it up. Thanks for attending. All right. I think the recording's done too. It, it says it's not. It says it's not done. It, the the red dot's still oh. going.